Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today. It's the day after what we witnessed yesterday between West Ham and Chelsea, where Chelsea showed up with a billion pound worth squad and fumbled the ball. 3-1 to West Ham. Chelsea, horrendous second half performance. The review for that game I will link to you right here. And on top of that, myself and George Benson on Shootout, our brand new football channel, go into some more detail in relation to Chelsea's game as well as the Tottenham Manchester United game and the Man City Newcastle game. You can check out our thoughts on those right here. I will leave a link to that as well. And you've got a brand new overall Premier League review for match day two that's coming to Shootout very soon as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And for the content dropping on Shootout, much appreciated. Give us a subscribe. Now, with the game yesterday... It's a day after, so we've got some clarity, right? We've got some uh, some awareness now on the situation, right? It's not the end of the world yet. The one thing that frustrated me yesterday was the manner that we lost, the manner that Chelsea gave the result away. It was a horrific second half performance, and that's something that I was not expecting. I would expect mistakes here and there, you know, teetering problems, things that are going to get better with time. I understand that. Um, but to just see the complete mannerism, the complete atmosphere, the energy being downbeat, everyone making silly individual errors, concentration all over the place, uh, not enough link up, everything was just all over the place. On top of that, tactically, I think Poch could have done better. The setup, I think Poch could have done better. The subs, I think Poch could have done better. There's, it was an overall package of things going wrong that you don't expect to see. But I do want to clarify, it's match day two. So I don't want to see that happen again, but it happening now is not the end of the world. Because we have 36 more games to play, we don't have European football, we've got all the way up until Friday now to get it right against Luton, and I'd expect against Luton we should be getting it right, but let's wait and see. Now, the one key thing, that weirdly enough, we didn't go into too much detail yesterday, but I believe in the game yesterday there was a turning point. There was one turning point, and I don't think we were able to react to that turning point in terms of the players, and even the manager. Hence why I think even tactically we went down the drain. And in terms of the players and the way we were playing, we went down the drain. There was one turning point and that turning point was when Carney Chukwamaker came off. When Carney Chukwamaker came off, that is when it all went downhill. Because we got the goal, we ended up getting the penalty. We missed, but Carney coming off at that point was a situation where we can't bring on an attacking midfielder now. And Kunku's out. Carney's now out. They're both out for a long time. Carney left the stadium on crutches, not even being able to put weight on his leg. And I told you guys when he was coming off the pitch and he couldn't put weight on his leg, that that's a very, very bad sign for a knee. I wouldn't be shocked if he's done his ACL. Which I have to say, by the way, in terms of the amount of ACLs this football club sees, we're cursed. Like, at this point, it's a curse. Someone has a spell on us. Surely. We have more ACLs than most clubs get in a 20-year period. Like, it's unbelievable. So when you look at it from that perspective, I have to say, normally you'd think medical team, medical team. But when players are getting hit with impact challenges, tackles, and then their knee goes or something like that, it's not really the medical team. Yesterday, Carney's um, issue on his knee was a case of post-tackle. And it didn't look as bad as it did up until when he couldn't put any weight on it. So to blame the medical team, meh but probably a bit naive. However, I do think medically, not in terms of the injury itself, but conditioning. I think we have a history now in the last few years of players not being conditioned enough or the muscle fibers not being as strong as they need to be. Things like that, I do think that needs to be addressed in terms of training and conditioning, strength and conditioning, I think needs to be addressed uh, within the team and at training. So let's see what's going to happen there. But with Carney coming off, we had no attacking midfielder to turn to. We ended up bringing Mudrik on, who's not an attacking midfielder, he's a winger. But even, even deciding to change the shape and later on going to a 4-3-3 when we brought Caicedo on and Caicedo was the lone six, this is where... This is where... It justifies us buying Romeo Lavia. And we were saying this. Caicedo by himself as a six. Can he do it? Probably from time to time. And yesterday I don't want to use it as an example. He had a horrific debut. But 
he hadn't played a competitive game in over 60 days. The man was completely rusty. He hadn't played for Brighton in pre-season. So I can understand. And now I can understand why he didn't play. If I'm honest, why, why, why he wasn't selected, sorry. Why he, was, why he didn't start. But us buying Romeo Lavia compensates for that because now we have an actual six. Lavia is an actual six. And you'll be able to have Caicedo just in front of him or on the long, alongside him with Enzo alongside him or just in front as well. So if we go to a 4-3-3 with those guys, I think we'll be okay, which we were not able to do yesterday. But Caicedo being a lone six, Mudrik going out to the wing, but massive hole in the middle in behind the striker. And I want to address, there's some people that are saying, no, Nicholas Jackson... Oh, uh, no, we need a new striker. He's not clinical enough. There's a difference between Nicholas Jackson not being clinical yesterday and a Kai Havertz, for example, not being clinical. Everything that Jackson done except score was correct. And even after Chukwameka, what did Jackson have to do? He had to come even more deep. He had to compensate for that. And he turned into the man that Carney was on that pitch whilst playing double duty. Hence why there were chances in that game where Jackson was running into the box. We were already at the box and Jackson was still running into the box because he was too deep. He had to compensate for both without us playing with an actual attacking midfielder. This is where I think we lost the game. Like the, the, the turning point, I believe, was this. So with Jackson... Everything he done was fine. For me, was fine. Can he be more clinical? Can he put the ball in there? Of course. But don't expect him to score every game. I don't expect any striker to score every single game. It's not going to happen. But every two, three games, yes. So the next game, I'll be honest, I'm expecting Jackson to put on a, a, a performance. I'm hoping he gets a goal. So let's see. But aside from that, the fact that we let go, the fact that we, we couldn't have Chukwameka on the pitch any longer and there wasn't anyone to turn to brings us to the topic of this video, which is the latest on an attacking midfielder. What are we going to do now? Nkunku's out for a while. It looks like Carney's going to be out for a while. So what's the latest? Here's the plans that apparently we have in place and um, we'll analyse exactly who Chelsea are going to turn to. And yes, it's another signing. Of course it is. <laughs> Here it is. Pochettino on Chelsea plans to sign more offensive players, saying it is not easy in this moment to find the right profile. We are in the process, working to see if we can add some players in this area. For sure, they are working really hard to add some players, he told TalkSport. On top of this, we have from Fabrizio saying that Chelsea decided to go for someone different than Kudus at the moment. And on top of that, we also have Chelsea are working on signing a creative attacker. Now, the update from Fabrizio is that Barcola is a priority for PSG. City are favourites to sign Doku, and I will address that in a moment. Chelsea looking at different players than Vlavic at the moment, and he's a striker. Chelsea haven't spoken to Gudus in almost 20 days. So the situation we're in right now, it doesn't look like we're going for Gudus. Olaze is not happening. Shirky is not happening. So those three names that we were linked with for quite some time, not happening. On top of that, Barcola, who we've heard now, is a priority for PSG, not for us. And some of you are saying, let's go and get Jao Felix. Even if it's just for this season, just as a stopgap. And I hear that. But apparently Chelsea are not looking at Felix. Poch is not looking at Felix because he just does not fit the profile of player that Poch wants. So this is where I have to ask all of you, in the comments, let me know. Who do we turn to? <laughs> if we need an attacking midfielder, who do we turn to? Now, I understand in a 4-3-3, we don't need an attacking midfielder, but there's going to be games like yesterday where we do need an attacking midfielder and we possibly need to go to a 4-2-3-1, which is something that we have to turn back to, please. In pre-season, that is all we worked on. And it looked fantastic. It got so much balance in the team with the players that we have. We have to use that formation and that system, surely. Get rid of this back three. Because we're leaking anyway. Get rid of the back three. Don't want to end up in the same situation we were in last season where we were just trying to force this through when in pre-season we'd done something completely different and it looked much fluid, much better, much more um, suiting to the players that we have in the squad. So we should turn back to the 4-2-3-1 slash 4-3-3 in games where we can use that. Now, as an attacking midfielder, who do we turn to? Now, the latest on Jeremy Doku is this. Let's get to it. Exclusive, Man City advancing on Jeremy Doku deal as new verbal proposal close to 55 million, 60 million euro package is being discussed with Wren. There's competition, but City hope to reach an agreement with Wren this week after green light on player side beginning of August. So unless if Chelsea are looking to hijack, which I, I'll be honest, I've got the feeling we're not going to. 
like it's already been said in terms of just City are favourites to sign Doku. There's not been much activity unless if Chelsea decide to make a move, but you never know. Who do we turn to? This is the thing now. And I want to ask you guys, let me know in the comments like I've already asked. Who do we turn to as the attacking midfielder to, to, to be able to compensate for Nkunku's absence and now Carney Chukwameka's absence? Who are we going to get? Don't say Mount. <laughs> I swear, some of you in the comments are going to put that. No, no, no. Um, he's not a 10 anyway. Which 10? Which 10 are we going to turn to? Personally, I ain't got a clue. I wouldn't mind seeing Jao Felix. But Poch has his reasons in terms of profile and I'm guessing in terms of defensive, not just work rate. I don't want to just make it look like work rate is everything. It's not everything. But in terms of being able to get back into certain positions to aid a defensive play in order to go on transition, to be able to be dynamic, to play between that defensive transition to attacking and get into a position to be able to assist or score. I just think Poch has his concerns that Felix might be surplus the requirements in that area. <laughs> so I genuinely don't know who we turn to. So let me know. Not much appreciated. That's video number one out of two. Done for you guys. Make sure you guys are here later on tonight as I will be giving you guys video number two. We'll see what else happens between now and tonight in relation to Chelsea and everyone else as well. Um, and like I already said, go and check out what myself and George had to say on Chelsea yesterday and the two other big games that took place this weekend on the shootout. Link is already up there for you guys. Check that out. Subscribe. Much appreciated. Thank you all so much. And don't forget on here to be able to catch video number two. You have to make sure that you're subscribed as well. Make sure you hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Check out the social media links. They are on screen for you right now, as well as in the description. My personal Instagram, my personal Twitter and TikTok, you'll find at Unistalks underscore on Insta, at Unistalks on X or Twitter, at Unistalks underscore on TikTok, and the Unistalks football pages at Unistalks football on Instagram, at um, Ytalks football on X, and at Unis Talks Football on TikTok as well, where you're getting daily content aside from here. So, much appreciated, guys. I will see all of you later on tonight. Have a good one. Take care and peace. <laughs>